Hey guys, Rick Stone here from Our Stony Acres. Welcome to our YouTube channel. While you're here, please make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell so that you get noticed every time we release new videos. Okay, so as promised, I'm continuing our monthly planting guide videos. Um, I promised that I would do those for the entire year. September is the month that we're talking about now and things are starting to get pretty thin for those of us that live in the colder zones. And so the lists are getting really short of what we can be planting in September. So I decided that I would just kind of combine all of the different gardening zones uh, into this video. So if you don't know what your garden zone is, there's a link in the description down below. Click on that. It will take you out to our website where you will then be directed to the appropriate governmental agency that will help you know what USDA equivalent zone you live in. Okay. All right. So let's start out with those of you that live in zones three and four. It's cold already probably for you. Your frost is coming soon and there's not a ton that you really can be planting. If you want to be adventurous, you could try planting some of the hardier leafy greens, but you have to recognize that in order for you to really get a harvest from them, you're gonna have to offer them some protection. So you're either gonna need to build a cold frame or a hoop house that you can put those in to keep them safe from the cold temperatures. So leafy greens that you could be planting would be lettuce, spinach, Swiss chard, kale, maybe some mosh or claytonia. Either of those would be uh, good as well. But um, that's really about it for those of you in zones three and four. Unless you've got maybe four to six weeks before your first frost, you might also try some radishes. You know, I don't, I don't know if that'll actually happen or not, but uh, you could definitely give it a go. So for those of you though in zones three and four, it's really kind of being adventurous and, and hit and miss uh, as to whether things that you plant this month will actually happen. All right, for those of you that live in zones five and six, there is a little bit more that you can be planting in September and still dependably get a bit of a harvest uh, before you know, the hard, hard winter comes in, but not a lot. And it's again, all leafy green related. So it's, it's all things that are leafy greens. And uh, with the exception of radishes, you could probably get some radishes in as well. Okay. All right. So let's look at our list here. So number one, lettuce, you can get some lettuces in. I would especially focus on leaf lettuces. Uh, they grow a little bit quicker and uh, you're running out of time. And so I would, you know, focus on leaf lettuces, uh, kale, you could plant some kale and still get a harvest from that. Spinach, for sure, you'll be able to get spinach to baby spinach stage before the real cold weather settles in. And then uh, mosh and claytonia, which are both very winter hardy plants. Uh, arugula, chard, chicory, endive, minzua, and sorrel. Again, all of those are leafy greens. And then you could try some radishes as well. Now, the key to getting a dependable harvest from all, all of these plantings in September in zones five and six is having some type of protection for those crops. So you either need to have a cold frame or a hoop house that you can cover those crops with so that they'll continue to grow and do well later into the winter months. And for some of them like kale, Swiss chard, spinach, if you protect them with a cold frame, they'll overwinter and you'll be able to harvest all winter long and then have a great harvest in the spring as well. So those are all things you can plant in zones five and six for September. Now let's move on to seven and eight. Zone seven isn't a lot different than zones five and six. Okay, so the one additional thing that you could try planting in zone seven would be carrots. Now you're not gonna be harvesting those until probably December or January, which means you've gotta do some protection. So if you're gonna plant those, they need to be in a hoop house or a cold frame eventually in order for you to harvest from those. Uh, other things in zone seven that you could be planting would be kale, um, beets. Uh, maybe you could try some broccoli or cabbage, but those have gotta be from transplants, okay? And uh, get them in early in the month. Um, radishes, collards, cauliflower, Swiss chard, and spinach, all of those zone seven and eight, you should be able to get in and get a, a harvest. But especially for zone seven, you really need to be thinking about building a hoop house or a cold frame in order to get a dependable harvest. Now, in zone eight, you could also try peas. 
So you still have some time that you could probably get some peas going, especially if you did like a snow pea or a sugar snap pea that doesn't require the pod to actually completely fill out. Um, both of those should do really, really well. And if you've got a nice, long, cool fall, uh, you could even do regular shelling peas as well. Okay, all right, so that's zone seven and eight. Now let's look at zone nine. You guys are warmer and uh, you're still going to be warm for quite a while. I would imagine you'll still have temperatures in the, the 80s until October, November uh, for sure. So um, plenty of things for you to still plant. You could do uh, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, kohlrabi, all of those from transplants. You're gonna be putting those as transplants, not seeds. Um, you could also be planting carrots, kale, um, beets, lettuce, Swiss chard, peas, uh, for sure later in the month and spinach. All of those you could get in and, and do that as your warm season crops start to clear out. So as, as your, you know, your cucumbers die or your zucchini finally gives out or your tomatoes give out, uh, replace those with these crops. And, and then there is one warm season crop that you could probably still get a harvest from and that would be beans. I would go with a bush bean, but you should still be able to get some, some green beans uh, growing in your garden this time of year, okay? All right, so that's zone nine. Now zone 10, you guys are the warm people, and so plenty for you guys. All of the cabbage family crops that we talked about later in the month, um, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi, all of those could definitely be planted again from transplants later in the month. You might even be able to get some winter squash still to grow. So we're talking about some of the smaller squashes that take a little less time to develop. Things like uh, acorn squash, spaghetti squash, uh, those smaller squashes like that. Uh, you may still actually be able to get some, some harvest from those if you plant them in September. Beans for sure, you could do some beans this month again. Later in the month, you could plant peas. And then towards the end of September, you could start thinking a little bit about some of your cooler season crops, things like lettuce, spinach, Swiss chard, arugula, some of those leafy greens you could be planting and getting those going as well so that you have plenty of stuff to harvest in December and January when the temperatures really cool off well, okay? All right, so that, my friends, is your September planting guide for all of the different zones. Hopefully this is helpful to you and it's been helpful to you all year long. We will continue to do uh, planting guides for October, November, December, although things are gonna get really thin <laughs> for those, those months. You know, there won't be a lot that we can plant other than for those of you that are in zones nine and 10, but we'll do a little video for you guys as well. So keep looking forward to those. Um, and if you want to know what to plant in the other months, just look in the playlist that's attached to the end of this video and I have all of the different months, uh, all of the different growing zones, there's videos for you guys, okay? All right, before we go, I just wanted to remind you to take a look at the Gardening Academy. That is our monthly membership service where you can join, and we just have a plethora of information to help you become a better gardener. I would love to have you become part of that group, and uh, there's a link in the description down below that will take you out and uh, tell you more about the weekly content that we have, all of the different monthly focus topics that we have going on. Just lots and lots of fun stuff happen in there. And uh, again, link down below for you to join that. So make sure you check that out. Okay, that's all I have for you for this week. Have a great week. Happy gardening.